Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. Few days ago I covered a getting started video on the D-Win display. This is another video with the D-Win HMI display, and today we will see how to interface this display with the STM32 microcontroller. I would advise you guys to watch the getting started video first, as it will help you understand some concepts that I might skip in this video. The HMI displays mostly use UART to communicate to the microcontrollers, so we are also going to use the UART to communicate with the SDM32. For this demonstration, I am going to control the LED on SDM32 using the buttons on the D-Win LCD. Let's see the D-Win website again. Go to Downloads, Tools. We have already downloaded these files in the previous tutorial, and today we will download the Serial Debugging Assistant. This is needed to see the output of the LCD, whenever we are performing some operations on it. We also need the development guide, so download this one. Everything you need to know is in this guide, and I will explain the components I am going to use as the video progresses. Alright let's start with the DGUS software. Create a new project, and give its location. I have downloaded some bitmaps that I am going to use as the on-off buttons. This is going to be the background image on the LCD. First of all we need to convert the images to proper size, and generate the ICL files for the icons and images. So let's start with the picture conversion. This is the image we want to resize. Select the screen resolution from here. Now click the image conversion, and save it in the image folder inside the project. Now we will generate the ICL files for the background image, and the icons. Select the background image that we just converted. Click on generate ICL and we must save it in the dwin set folder in our project. But what should we name this file? To understand it, we should look into the flash memory allocation. As mentioned here, the background picture ICL address is located at 32. We will also name it 32. Next we need to generate the ICL file for the icons we are using. Load the icons in the ICL generator, and click Generate ICL. The ICL address for the icons is at 48. So we will name the file 48. This completes the ICL file generations for the assets we are using in this project. We also need to copy these icon files in the project folder. Alright now we can start designing the interface. First we will add the background image. Now to display the on-off icons, we will use the variable icon control. You can find more about this variable icon in the development guide itself. As mentioned here, its function is to display different icons based on variable value. When the variable changes, the icons get switched automatically. Here is the detail of the setting page for the variable icon. Anyway I will explain these in detail while setting them up. Let's leave the SP to default, we are not covering that today. The VP stands for variable pointer, and we will see it in the end. We need to set the icon file, which is 48 in our case. The variable icon takes the value from the variable stored at the variable pointer. Since we are using the on and off icons, we will keep the value of that variable as either 0 or 1. 
The minimum value of this variable is going to be 0, and we will set this green icon corresponding to this value. Similarly, the maximum value is going to be 1, and we will set the red icon corresponding to this value. So basically when the variable is 0, it means the LED is off, and the LCD is going to display the green icon, to turn on the LED. And when the variable is 1, the LED will be on, the LCD will display the red icon, to turn off the LED. As I mentioned, the variable pointer is where the variable is going to store. This is basically a particular address in the RAM, and we can think of it as the address of some variable, whose value we can change using some means. You can find more about the variable pointer in the development guide itself. If you notice here, the RAM is 128 kilobytes, which ranges from 0 to FFFF, with each address corresponding to 2 bytes. Out of this, the first 8 kilobytes is reserved for the system variables, and the user can only access the addresses 1000 onwards. So I am going to set the variable pointer address to 1100 hexa. Now the variable icon will look for the value stored in this particular address, and based on that value, the icons will change automatically. So we have set the variable pointer to look for the value stored at this particular address, but we also need to modify the value at this particular address. To do so we will use the incremental adjustment. This touch control will basically increment, or decrement the value of the variable. You can find more details about it in the development guide. Check the data auto uploading. We will set the same variable pointer, 1100 hexa. The adjust method is set to increment, so each time you touch the area, the value is going to increase. But we want the value to be either 0 or 1, so we'll set the over limit to cycle. This will make sure that whenever the value has reached the maximum, the next touch will set the value to the minimum. The step length is 1. Lower limit is 0, and the upper limit is 1. So, if the variable value is 0, the touch will increment it to 1, and the next touch will reset it to 0, and the process will continue. This way we will achieve what we want. The touch effect should be disposable, so that long press will only register as a single click. Alright this is it for the configuration. Click save, and generate the project. Before uploading the code to the LCD, you can debug it and check if everything is working alright. The icons are changing whenever we tap on them, this means the variable is indeed incrementing, and things are working fine. By the way, you can also modify the project, and see the effect on the debugger window in real time. So this is very helpful if you are designing something big. Let's upload the code to the LCD. Select the DWIN set directory, and it will automatically load the files needed to be flashed on the LCD. The LCD is connected to the COM11, and the board rate should be 115200. Click start downloading to download the project. Alright everything is finished, and you can see the LCD restarts with the new project we just copied. The buttons are also responding well. So far everything is fine, now we need to see what commands does this LCD send whenever we press these buttons. To know this, we will use the serial debugger we downloaded in the beginning. Make sure the COM port is set to proper one, and the board rate is set to 115200. The LCD is displaying the green button, let's press it. You can see there is some command sent by the LCD over the UART. Let's understand this command first. We need to look into the data frame structure. Here you can see the first data block is the frame, 
which is basically the 5A, A5 in hexadecimal. We have also got exactly the same frame. The next block is the data length, which basically tells us how long the data is going to be. In our case, it's going to be 6 bytes long. These 6 bytes contain the instruction, the data itself, and the CRC. The next block is the instruction. There are two instructions we can perform on the LCD. 0 cross 82 is to write something on the LCD, and 0 cross 83 is to read something from it. Here we are performing the read from the LCD. Basically when we touch the area on the LCD, in a way, we are sending the read instruction to the LCD, and it replies back with the value of the variable pointer. After instruction we have the data itself, which can be up to 249 bytes long. Let's see some examples to understand it better. This is the example to read the variable pointer. This here is the output from the LCD. First we have the frame, data length, and the read instruction. The next two bytes are the address of the variable pointer. Which in our case is 1100. The same what we set in the incremental adjustment. After the address, there is one, the number of words to read. We are also reading one word. The last two bytes are the values stored in the RAM address. In our case the value is 1. So we pressed the green button, and the LCD sent 1 in the output, and the button is red now. On pressing the red button, everything is the same, except the value is 0. Basically, when the LCD displays the green button, the LED will be off. On pressing the green button, the LCD will send one in the output, which will turn on the LED. The LCD will display the red button now, and on pressing it, the LCD will send a zero to the output, which will turn off the LED. So all we have to look for is this last byte, and whether this byte is one or zero, will control the LED. If you count here, there are a total of nine bytes in this command. Let's keep that in mind, and now we will create a new project in STM32. I am using the STM32 F103 controller. Give some name to the project, and click finish. First of all we will do the clock setup. I am choosing the external high speed crystal for the clock. The blue pill has 8 MHz crystal, and we will run the system at a maximum 72 MHz frequency. Enable the serial wire debug. Now we will enable the UART to communicate with the LCD. I am choosing the UART1 for this purpose. Make sure the board rate is set to 115200. Leave everything to default here. Enable the interrupt as we are going to use interrupt to receive the data from the LCD. That's all the configuration required, click save to generate the project. By the way I have soldered a 4 pin header on the LCM module. The module has the pins TX4, TX2, RX2 and RX4. I am connecting the TX2 to the RX pin of the STM32, and RX2 to the TX pin of the STM32. Let's write the code now. First of all we will define an array to store 9 bytes of the data. Now in the main function, we will receive the UART data in the interrupt mode. We will set the interrupt to trigger after 9 bytes have been received. Once that happens, the receive complete callback will be called, and we will write the rest inside it. If you remember, the HAL disables the interrupt after triggering it once, so we will again call the interrupt receive here. This will make sure the data is received continuously. Now the data is stored in the RX data array, and if you remember only the last byte of this data is significant to us? We will process this data in the while loop. Here we will check the last byte of this array, and if this byte is 1, we will turn on the LED at PC13. The LED on the blue pill is active low, so to turn it on, we must pull the pin low. 
Similarly, if the last byte is zero, we will turn off the LED, by pulling it high. I forgot to enable this PC13 LED in the Cube MX. Set this pin to output, and build the code again. Alright everything is set now, build the code and debug it. I am adding this Rx data in the live expression. Since the LCD outputs the hexadecimal values, we need to change the format to hexadecimal. Remember that after changing it, you need to restart the debugger, or else it won't show the correct values. Let's run the code now. Right now the green button is displaying on the LCD, and the LED is turned off. When we press the button, the LED turns on. You can see the RX data array, the last byte is 1, indicating to turn on the LED. When the red button is pressed, the last byte is 0, and the LED turns off. You can see the LED is responding well with respect to the icons on the LCD. So I hope you understood how to interface this DWIN LCD with SDM32. You can interface it with any microcontroller, which has the UART, as it needs only UART to communicate. This is it for the video. I hope you understood the logic well enough. Let me know if you want me to continue this series in the comments below. You can download the code from the link in the description. Keep watching and have a nice day ahead.